Oh, we're live. No intro. No nothing. Here we go. I'm oh, up. here we go. Oh, here the intro. Go. That's right. I forgot the intro. That's the intro. All right. This is what happens when you take a week off. I'm telling you, man. That's okay. We had a we had an amazing Memorial Day. Uh, you were traveling back from Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And I was up in Traverse City doing some wine tasting, and you know, and here yeah. we are. We're back. It was a good weekend. We're back. It's a good weekend. <laughs> it's a good weekend. <laughs> No, my uh, bad on the intro. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, all good. All good. Uh, <laughs> usually we have a countdown all thrown up. All right, well, good morning, everybody. So, hey, uh, welcome to the welcome to the Saturday morning uh, uh, webinar live stream that we do. We've, d- we've been doing it, gosh, it's been like over a year now straight. And so uh, I'm Austin Bottas. I'm the director of sales on the team. And Mike Perna is our CEO. Mm-hmm. Mike Perna also got a lot of sun in Abu Dhabi. And I'm a little concerned with you. Might, if you guys yeah. have any lo- lotion recommendations for Mike's head, oh god, it's so uh, bad. <laughs> feel free to throw those in the chat. But, it's so uh, bad. I'm, um, and I'm telling you, man, I'm using like like an exfoliant, like a, like a scrub thing. Like it's, oh, yeah. Are yeah. you exfoliating? Is that what's going on? I'm trying that too. Yeah, like I'm using like like an exfoliant thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's only it's only here. Like the rest of it is good. Um, but it was just, it was just that those last two days, right? Those last two days, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to soak up as much sun as I can. So in 105 degree direct sun, Middle East, it, it, it was each day, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it happens. By the way, yeah. I got some bad news this week along that same front. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of SPF. I mean, it's like, it's like an American express for me. I, I don't go anywhere without it. Right. I'm pretty fair skinned. And, uh, uh, Apparently, there's some new studies out that there's like carcinogens in in suntan lotion. So, really? damned if you do, damned if you don't. Now, my wife just chimed in and said, "Not the ones that we buy, but like, you know, <laughs> I haven't known her my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure, <laughs> I've been without that information in some formative years, and so I, you know, I guess, damned if I'm do, damned if I don't. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, and I'm bad at that. I don't use any of the SPFs. I don't use any of the any of the suntan uh, lotions or, or any of that stuff. None of it. Wow. Yeah, yeah I probably crazy. should. I you probably should have. There's, I mean, there's plenty of things worse than a sunburn, but there's nothing worse than a sunburn. I <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so hey, good morning, everybody. And so here's the format of this team SPF seventy. Thank you, Katie. I'm with you, Katie Rogers. Throw there that is. up. <laughs> Oh my God, Katie uh, Rogers, she like glows. Like, like yeah, I went to the office the other day and the power was out, but it was fine because she was there. <laughs> yeah. She's Minnesota originally. They just, of course, they probably get more sun than us, to be honest with you. But, True. Uh, True. A little colder out there. But anyway, uh, so g- welcome and good morning. And so the format of this is anything that you have on your mind, real estate related, we take the time and we answer the questions. And uh, Mike, I like to think that we do it in about as candid of a fashion as you can do it. It's kind of, Unscripted, we just give you the give you our opinion on it and give you the the the, the down low, right? So throw those questions yeah. in there. I know you and I were kind of talking about some, so so feel free to do that. Uh, you and I were talking about some different topics, and I, I you know, yeah, I'd love to I'm bounce one at that. you. I, can I share with you something that I've been experiencing here over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, please, please. Look, there's a there's a lot of folks that are really nervous about upsizing about upsizing, right? And so and so what I mean by upsizing, Mike, is I'm saying like, okay, you're in a home and let's pretend like, let's pretend that you bought your quote unquote starter home, right? So I paint a picture like you're, let's pretend you're 30 years old and you, you bought a three bedroom home and now like five years later, you've got two kids and you're looking at it and you're like, man, I'm crammed in here and I need more space. I need to go from, from 1100 square feet to like 1700 square feet or i need to go from three bedrooms to four bedrooms or another mm-hmm. big one that we run into mike is like we're all of us are sharing one bathroom and so like like there's either going to be there's either going to be deaths in our home or we need to get a second bathroom uh or whatever that looks like but and then and then they kind of go out and um I don't know. They're experiencing a little bit of sticker shock. I think it's, it's, yeah. you know, they, it's, it's just a fear of upsizing. So uh, it, that's kind of what I've been experiencing. I, I, I guess I'd like to talk, toss it over to you. I, what are your thoughts on that? No. And, and I'm seeing the same thing. And, and 
And one thing that I'm hearing is, is a lot of people are super afraid to get their homes on the market mm. to make that upsize move mm. or any kind of move upsize, downsize, left size, right size. It, it doesn't matter. Like, like, because homes right now, they, they, and depending on price point, of course, but they're moving just so darn quick. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of getting out there and not finding something and becoming homeless. Yeah. I'm seeing that quite a bit in the market right now, which again, you know, keeps propelling the problem of there's no inventory. Right. So there aren't enough homes on the market. So people are afraid to put their home on the market because they won't find something, which again, withholds homes from the market. And it becomes this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy instead of people saying, okay, you know what, we're going to jump out there and we're going to go and find that home. And where we are going to put our home on the market, which would actually ease the whole thing up. Yeah. 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 It's like this, it's like this juggling act. How to like, how do we plan out? We got it. We know we got to sell our house. But we don't want to put our spot, especially like I got two kids, man. I, don't, I can't put myself in a spot where uh, I can't put myself in a spot where like I, I, I'm going to be homeless or like having to live in an extended stay or something for an extended period of time. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's just a tough spot to be he, here. I, and so we've talked about this topic a lot. I, and we've talked about this topic a lot. I also think there's some mindset involved here, Mike. Like, like, so, so I'll paint that same picture. So let's pretend you were a family that, uh, let's pretend that you were a family and you went out, uh, or maybe you were a newlywed, right? You, maybe you were a newlywed, you went out and looked at a property and you bought a home, or maybe you had your first baby and you bought a home and let's pretend you bought it for like a three bed, one bath, uh, you know, thousand square feet, 1200 square foot home in Livonia, Plymouth. Westland, any of them, right? Like, uh, you know, all the way out east side, any any of these places, right? Right. And um, or even like uh, Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, anywhere, right? And uh, and let's pretend you bought that home for two hundred thousand dollars. And at the time, two fifty felt like a stretch, but you could have gotten a, you could have gotten like a four bed, bath and a half, seventeen hundred square foot, like colonial, for two fifty. But yeah. that's like a stretch at the time right? With your budget. So you're like, okay, it's time to upsize. We had another baby or like, or my kids are in an age, I need to get into this extra bathroom. I need to get the extra bedroom, whatever it might be. Maybe we had a, maybe we had an unexpected third child, right? Whatever it is. Right. And now you're going out and looking and that property that like that property that would have been 250 when you were looking five or six years ago is what three and a quarter. Yeah. Maybe, probably a little higher, maybe, yeah. maybe even three fifty. Yeah. Right. Probably three fifty. Yeah. Probably three fifty. Yes. No, I think you can get a. Well, I, I mean, it depends yeah. on. It's going to depend on the city too, right? Yeah. It's going to depend on city. It's going to depend on, depend on the amenities. It's going to depend depend on all of those things, right? Because there are some cities where where that home, that four bedroom with a bath and a half or two full baths, will be you know four fifty fifty or five hundred. Some where it will be three hundred. You know, we, so we always got to temper it with the location. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I always think I always think Livonia, like, because Livonia is just kind of a, it's an all American mm -hmm. city. It's a good city, right? I always think Livonia for whatever reason. Yeah. One of the top fifty safest cities in the U.S. No doubt, good city, right? And I think I think a I think a four bed two four bed two bath or a four bed bath and a half Colonial in Livonia is probably three and a quarter, right? Yeah. Yeah, three and a quarter, three fifty, right in that range. Somewhere in that range. Uh, and in so there's like some sticker shock there. Yeah. I mean, there really is though. It's it's so part of this is like a part of this is a mental thing. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe and so you're faced your family now and you're faced with that decision. Do you go like man, do we gut it out? Because I don't I don't think that house is worth that, right? We're we're running into that a lot. I can't believe how much homes are, are selling for. I can't believe that house is worth that. Yeah. And, uh, and it's all part of a bigger narrative, right? So from a mindset standpoint, Mike, like from a, because, it, because you got to wrap your head around it when you're upsizing, when you're upsizing, you're going to pay more, right? So you got to yeah. kind of wrap your head around that. So, so like, what's your advice to people that are trying to wrap their head around that, Mike? Well, and, and, and I see two different things kind of, kind of coming out. Right. So some people are afraid that the market's going to crash. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So, so there's a, there's a, a fear that the market's going to crash like it did in 07, 08, 09. 
and they're going to lose not not only lose a ton of equity but go negative right and yeah. then there's another fear that they're overpaying for a property just in general mm -hmm. just in general like i just don't want to pay that much mm -hmm. right so we'll tackle those individually now the i don't want to pay that much crowd and i totally understand that i think i think with anything in life i mean and not just not just a house but a house a car um a t-shirt um going to Costco and buying uh, buying a, a thing of salmon. Like, it doesn't matter. We look at everything and think it should be a little bit less expensive than it really is. Yeah. Is that fair? It really is. Like, man, you just bought a new car. Yeah. For any of you guys that haven't bought a car in 10 years, get get ready. It's a bear. It's Oh, my God, it's a bear. And it's a bear on two fronts, right? It's a bear yeah. because, that, because of those sticker prices. Yeah. And it's a bear because there is a lack of inventory on cars right now because of that microprocessor chip thing situation that's going on, which should be correcting itself by the end of the year. But here's it. All right. Fun fact. Fun fact. Yeah. So a friend of mine uh, in Florida owns a, a Land Rover, a Range Rover. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I buy American. One of the big ones. The, the big one, the bigger Range Rover. Is that yeah. what that is? Yeah, it that sounds great. Right. That yeah, sounds right. right. Range Rover. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's two years old. He's got 50,000 miles on it. He took it to the dealer. Well, he, drew, he went to the dealer because he was thinking, well, maybe I'll trade this in and get another one. And not only did they not have that one, but the dealer said, hey, we'll buy it from you for 10,000 more than you paid for it two years ago new. Yeah. Cars actually went up in value, not down in value in the last two years, used cars. And that doesn't happen. And that's not an isolated incident. I, I'm hearing about this from different people that have been to dealerships, right? You know, everything just just gets more expensive as time goes on. So we kind of bringing this one home, you know, with as a buyer of any product or good or service, we always want to look at something and think that should be less expensive. Yeah. As a seller. And again, you know, think about this. If you've ever sold something on, on you know, Facebook Marketplace or eBay or, you know, Craigslist or anything like that, we're always disappointed at how little we got. Sure. Yeah. You know, so it's perspective. It's perspective as to what side of the coin you're on, right? Yeah. You know, you're never, never happy. I mean, in my opinion, you're never happy enough with the money you get for something yeah. and you're always overpaying for the next thing, yeah. at least mentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, look, traditionally, we see that from sellers, right? Like, mm -hmm. people always think that their home is worth, yeah, I mean, not much. People aren't like crazy. I mean, people don't do crazy things for the most part, but they always yeah. think it's like a smidge worth more than what it is. Sure. Right? And, sure. And, and an asset, we say this all the time, an asset is worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And it doesn't yep. matter what the asset is. That's how that's how the stock market works. That's how Bitcoin that's how works. works. That's how gold works. That's how anything yeah. works, right? That's how cars yeah. work. Something is worth what someone's willing to pay for. That's how the, you know, it's, you know it's, yep. it works. But anyway. Uh, and then, go ahead. Well, and the other thing I was going to say, and one of the things that we say all the time, Mike, is like, look, sellers, for the most part, they care how much they're walking away with in their pocket. Yes. But buyers care what their payment is. 100. I mean, I mean, we run into like, we run into some cash buyers, but by and large, people people finance things, especially right now, because rates are sub 3%. So it's like, so people are looking at it and they're getting a stock a sticker shock on it. But the reality is, is that to upsize that home might be $500 more a month. Now the truth is yeah. $500 is $500, right? It's not an insignificant amount of money. A lot of money. But, like, but compared to five years ago, you might be earning more. You yeah. might be earning more. You might be spending less on other things. You might be, uh, you know, and, and just over the course of time, things go up in price. And, and yeah. the other interesting thing about that is, you know, if you intend on living in a home for, I mean, Mike, if you intend on living a home for 10 years, your home's going to go up in value too. And, uh, uh, and so mm. <laughs> you're locking in on, you're locking in on a great home on today's prices versus what you would pay for that home 10 years from now or five years from now and be miserable sharing all one bathroom. I, you know what I mean? It's yeah. And that, and that's an interesting kind of third point. Um, and I will get back to the other point of, of where the, where the market is, what could cause it to crash and what will, what will make it not crash. But that's an interesting point where, where people will go into a home with the intention to live there for 
four or five, four or five years, let's just call it. Yeah. Right. Seven, eight, nine, ten years later, they're still there. And I am the I'm the I'm the example, right? I am the yep. example. Hey Mark. Hey Mark. Mark from Florida. I like um, you ready to buy a VRBO down in Naples. Can yeah. you talk me into that or out of that? Uh, Mark can definitely talk you into that. I'm sure Mark can talk me into that. Yeah. All right, Mark, I'm yeah. gonna holler at you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, where I was going with it is is, is <clears throat> I mean, look at look at I mean, and I'll use my parents as an example, right? So they built a home in 1984, nothing to do with uh, George Orwell or the book or anything like that. But they just bought a, built a home in 1984, and their intention was to move in 1990, 1992, something like that, when we were of a certain age, and then get into the next home. Yep. They stayed into that home all the way to 2002. Yep. Yeah, so their intention was to move eight or 10 years later, but it was more like 20. Yeah. And it just is what it is. I mean, like this home that I'm in right now, my intention was to be here for three years and we're going on six. Yeah. You know, and I'm, and I am actively looking for a home. I mean, on a scale of one to 10, I would, I would rate the word active like a two, but you know, I would, I would like to move and I've got other things that we're doing. Yeah, I would like to move and I, I yeah. got to run a real estate team. I would like to move and I got to shovel the snow today. So I'm not going to look on Zillow. I've, I'd like to move and life happens. Yeah. And this is just how it goes, right? And my point with this is making that move sooner to your point, Austin, because home values are going up and they sure are not going to be going down anytime soon. Even if the market does drop five or even 10%, which let's be honest, that's just unrealistic to happen. By yeah. all, by if you look at any economic indicator, that's just not going to happen. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. You're locking in at both today's price and today's interest rate. Yep. Both. Yep. So my advice is, and I should probably take this advice myself, make the move. Make the move. Make the we move actually, 350 house before it goes to 425. How about this? We even went, we even went more aggressive than that when we bought our home, Mike. I don't know if I told you this story, but when we, so when we bought our home, we were coming from, uh, we were coming from three bed with a bed in the in the basement, like a finished basement. So we kind of called it a four bed, but it was really, it was really a three bed, two bath, probably fifteen hundred square foot ranch with a with a two car garage, right? And so what we what our intent was is we wanted to buy something for like twenty five hundred square foot with a basement or like twenty two hundred square feet with a basement. We didn't want to go too much bigger. And then right. we thought to ourselves like we'll move again at some point. You know, we'll live here for five years and then we'll, or seven years or whatever. And then we'll move again at some point. We'll get, we'll upsize and go bigger. And so then when we were looking at homes, uh, we came across the home that we're in now. And it was like, it was the home. It was, it was the next home after the next home. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, that's a really funny comment. One of our agents. <laughs> I just need five minutes, buddy. Let's talk about your home search. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Good job. Good job, Cody. Good job, Cody. Cody, you're a fantastic agent. Fantastic agent. We just helped Cody and, and his uh, uh, his aunt and uncle and did a killer job for them. Got them like thirty thousand dollars over on selling their home. So, anyway, uh, but anyway, um, look. So what we ended up doing, Mike, is like we bought our next home. Does that make sense? Yeah. And well, the first yeah. we've been, it was kind of, it, it was kind of like. And it also meant that we would take on a little more on the repair side. Like when we moved in, there was an extra wallpaper and there was extra stuff like that. And, but we were like, you know what? Let's, we, we you know, we, at the point, we, at that point, we didn't have any kids, Mike. And, but we were like, all right, well, we intend to have at least one, hopefully two, if God willing. And now we have two. And, and so we wanted something with four bedrooms. And it, we have a fifth one kind of down in the basement with a walkout basement. And, uh, and we were like, this is too much house for us. But you know what? Rather than have to move again in five years, let's grow into this thing. And so we actually bought our next home. And it was like those first couple of years, it was a bit of a stretch. Like it was, it was like, it was, you know, it was $300 more a month than we wanted to pay. You know what well, I mean? And I was going to ask you that because my, my parents had done something very similar where they were looking. So, so they ended up in a 2,400 square foot home. And at that time in the early 80s, I mean, that, that's a big home. Um, and that's what they were building. So they were originally looking in a different city around 16, 1700 with the intention to live there for three or four years, build a little equity, um, 
you know, my dad was going to be from a journeyman electrician to a master electrician, maybe pick up some extra cash that way at some point in time, because that's a hard license to get and then make that next move as we entered school. Um, but then frankly, the, the, the market, there was a, there were, and there was a builder that, that was frankly doing a poor job and kind of, got, well, he, his builds were good, but he was, he was pretty much teetering on the edge of going out of business. And he slashed the price of a home, $10,000. A new bill. That's all, and that, that's all it was was ten thousand dollars, which in today's world looks like a lot. In I mean, if you if we reset the money thirty five years back, it's a thirty five or forty thousand dollars slash today on a new bill, right? If we adjust, and my my mom and my dad and my dad, I mean, I feel like my dad kind of got into that like kicking and screaming, but they did go for that home, and I mean, it was folding chairs and bologna sandwiches for the first couple of years. It was, it was tight. It was way tighter than, than they, they ever thought that they would do, but yeah. it worked out and it worked out well because after the first two years, all of a sudden General Motors is paying more. My dad is making more, you know, yeah. there's a, there's a, a, a new license, the master electrician license that, that came in, you know, my sister started going to school. So my mom was able to go back to work. Like all of those things kind of fell into place two years later. So instead of, and that's probably the impetus for the reason why they didn't move pretend it for in year 10, but they waited till year 20, but it worked. Yeah. It, it actually worked. And to your point, we grew into the house because of Art Van and, you know, other things that people use to fill houses with, or at least at the time, Art Van. Sure. You know, today, Amazon, right? Sure. sure. Yeah. Here's the other thing I say to people. Uh, boy, and this is a delicate conversation, Mike. Uh, so I, I'll probably like that. No, Art Van. Art Van's a de delicate conversation. It really is. I mean, that that's a Michigan thing and is no longer a thing. I, I yeah. find most clients are upsizing somewhere in like their thirties, like I'd say thirties and uh, uh, kind of early forties. Agreed. Yeah. It's kind of, I mean, that's kind of the wheelhouse and people upsize. Uh, it's so, it's so I'm specifically talking to you all that are in your early thirties. Um, one of the things that's really difficult to do is to bet on yourself right? Because you're looking at your wages or you're looking at what you're earning and you don't want to outstretch yourself. You don't want to put yourself, you heard all these horror stories about people overextending themselves and, uh, and then the financial markets crash and people lost homes and kind of all those things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, the, the, and where I'm going with this, Mike, is do you know do you know what the prime earning years for most Americans is like the the years that you earn the most money traditionally in your career? I gotta be honest, I have no idea. No idea at all. I honestly have no idea. I've never even thought about that. But that's you a really guess? cool statistic. I want to know. Yeah. Um, I mean, compared to your expenses, no. Probably when you're like prime 16. earning years, just dollars earned. Okay, that's different. Because I was going to go with like sixteen or something, because your parents are taking care of all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, no and you're making you're making like lunch money and stuff like that, right? And you're buying like a moped or whatever. Um, <laughs> you're buying a system for your car. That's, that's right. That's right. right. Oh my god! Out there. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, what, that's what I did. That is <laughs> what I did. Um, man, I had the I had the baddest Kenwood head unit. Um, it's a it's a little it's a probably thirty five forty. Yeah, it's a you're right in the you're right in the range. It's a few years younger for women. Uh, yeah. Women peak a little earlier than men. Oh, that's smart, much, yeah. by a couple of years, but it's right. It's basically like forty five to fifty five. Okay, and right? no, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. That makes, makes perfect sense. sense yeah, right? because you're, like a, you're in your you're in your you're in your all right. So, and that does make perfect sense because if you think about out about it logically, like we don't truly become adults till our late twenties. Let's be honest, right? We're I mean, because entire book on it called. Yeah, we don't oh, even become wow. human beings as men until like our late twenties. Yeah. 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 Well, for anybody in your twenties, or anybody that has somebody that that like a kid that's going into their twenties, yeah. grab the book, The Defining Decade. Yes. The Defining Decade, and it's about exactly that about how, like, like we're pushing our kids to try to find themselves as teenagers going into college, but the reality is we're not even fully developed until you know basically mid twenties, and we really settle into who we are. And what we love in our late 20s, somewhere between 26 and 28, right? And it, it's it, it's a great book. Gary Keller recommended us to read it, um, and I did. Um, working with people in their 20s to kind of help coach them and kind of kind of get on that level, uh, yeah. but I, extremely highly recommended. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it, you know, late 20s, we're just settling into who we are, 
Yep. And the 10,000 hour rule dictates it takes four to five years of working 40 hours a week to really become specialized. 10, 10, 10 years to be a master at anything. 10 years, 40 hour a week. Yeah. yeah 10, well, that puts us into our late thirties at best. Yep. And then we got to do the work and we yep. got to do the work at a high level yep. for somebody to recognize us, promote, then promote again. Yep. And that puts us into our forties. That makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Looking at all the other pieces, it makes perfect sense. And so, and so, and this is a hard conversation to have us with someone that's nervous about upsizing in their lifestyle or, or maybe going a little over their budget, what they wanted to do when they're 32 years old or 35 years old or whatever it is. But, but the reality is, is, is the conversation that sometimes I'll have, I, I, uh, it's a delicate conversation. You really have to have trust with the client in order to have this, this direct of a conversation. But the conversation that I'll have with them is like, Hey, you, you got to bet on yourself. You're, yeah. not even, you're not even close to your prime. The other thing that we get skewed by is is athletes. Like we hear a prime and prime for a professional athlete is like what, 26, 28, somewhere in there. Yeah. But but us as like humans and as earners and workers, our prime isn't till like 45 to 55. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so uh, there's a there's a better than yourself element. And so that's what we did. Like, uh, that's what we did. We were like, you know what? We're in a good spot. We're earning money. We're to, this isn't going to kill us. It's more than what it's a little. We're stretching ourselves based on what we want to do. But let's bet on ourselves. We're only getting better at what we do. And we're only getting and, and we have like since then, since we bought this home, I, I think my wife's been promoted two or three times. Uh you know, my earning has gone up. It's just, you, 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 there's a bet in yourself thing. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing to broach, but yeah, 45 to 55. Anyhow. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's talk about timing then, by the way. Hey, good morning, everybody. If it's your first time on this, welcome. Welcome. We do this every single, we do this every single Saturday at 10 AM. Uh, and, and we're all over the place. We're on Facebook and we're on YouTube and we're on web pages and all kinds of stuff. And so my name is Austin Bodice. I'm the director of sales on the Perna team. Mike is the, is the CEO and founder of the Perna team. And um, look, we, we answer any questions that you have real estate related and, um, uh, and, uh, um, and so throw them in the box, throw, throw, throw them in the chat box. We'll make sure that we ask, we may answer them for you. The topic that we've been talking about today is kind of the, the nervousness about uh, now that's funny. That is <laughs> they, I bought the extra warranty. Uh, but anyway, so the topic that we've been talking about this morning is like people are nervous about about upsizing. People are nervous about upsizing. About so timing. Yeah. So previously what we've covered is just kind of the mindset side of things. Like, you know, things co- things always cost more than you think they should, right? There's yeah. always a sticker shock when you go to buy something. Anybody that's gone and bought a car recently knows that. Anybody that's gone and bought lumber recently knows that, right? There's always sticker shocks or things. Uh, we, anybody that's ever tried a home renovation and thought, okay, I'm going to budget five thousand dollars and ten grand later, you're done with your home renovation. It just things cost more than what they what you think they should, right? Yeah. The other thing that we've been talking about is kind of betting on yourself and, and knowing that, hey, it's okay. It's okay to stretch yourself a little bit now because what's going to happen is wages are going to catch up and you're going to lock in on. You're better off getting the home that you want and locking in on that versus versus flubbing it and having to move five years from now, right? Yep. And uh, um, so we've just been talking about the mindset side of things. And so the other thing that comes into play with that, Mike, and you brought it up early, but uh, it, but I'm going to pass this back off to you, is like the timing of things. So like people don't want to put themselves in a spot where they're uh, – people don't want to put their spots in, themselves in a spot where like – They've sold their house, but they're not finding the house that they want, and they're not finding the house that they want for the price they want to pay. Is what that conversation actually is. But they're not finding the price, the home that they want, and uh, you know. Uh, yeah. and so, talk a little bit about the timing of a move, Mike, and how we can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so a couple of things on this. Um, if you're considering making a move anytime in the next year. Two things. One, move up that timeline as far as possible. Do yourself the favor. You know, the Case Shiller Index just came out uh, showing that nationwide, year over year, homes went up 13.2% in average sales price, in value, right? 13.2%. That's huge. Second, here in Michigan, it's even more aggressive. We're closer to 15%. We're just a hair below 15%. And this is how aggressive it is. 
in May, the average home closing sales price went up $8,500. From May 1st to May 31st, in 30 days, home values went up on average $8,500. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I just ran the numbers. Yeah. And I'm running the numbers. I'm not even running numbers at this point on a yearly basis or a half year basis or even a quarterly basis. I'm running numbers now on a monthly basis because things are 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 changing that rapidly. Right? Home values are changing that rapidly. So if you're considering, you're thinking, okay, maybe next spring I'm gonna make a move. Nope. Today is the day, now is the time. I would I would heavily, heavily advise somebody to get into the market and looking. The second reason why is it's taken 90 days longer than normal to find that perfect home. Yeah. So I'm seeing a lot of clients and, you know, you know, and, 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 you know, one, one of our inside sales associates had just tagged me on one where this buyer had gone out uh, with one of our agents a couple times, just had what they were looking for yet. They've been searching for three weeks, four weeks. Um, and the reality is the home that you want is probably not on the market this week. And it may not be on the market this month, but if we don't know what you're looking for and we don't know this today, when it does come up, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. So this is where you got to reach out to us, frankly, now and say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. These are these are my criteria points. This is my home search. And then one of our people can be literally monitoring the market by hand on a daily basis for you. Because when it comes up, you got to grab it because the inventory is so tight. And so if you and the homes are not coming to the market like they were, because the, the, the problem isn't so much that there's three buyers for every home. The problem is there are fewer properties coming to market. It's not actually that demand has gone up because it really hasn't. It's a supply issue, right? And the supply issue has been culminating for a decade through, you know, builders not building and a whole litany of things. So timing wise, I did, I would advise getting out there sooner rather than later. If you're considering a move anytime in the next 12 months, give us a call today yeah. and have us monitor the market. And hand monitor the market so when the right one comes up we can we can get you out there and at least give you the ability to say no to something before somebody else takes that ability away from you yeah well, that's it because like if you wait two days somebody else took away your option yeah like and then you don't even have the right to say no because somebody took that yeah right you know i'm not saying you have to buy a house i'm just saying that i want to give you the opportunity to either say yes or no to a property, but I can't do that if I don't know you're looking. Second yeah. is, again, going to timing, home values are going up, they're not going down, right? The home that you're gonna buy today is gonna be five to 15% more expensive six to 12 months from now. And interest rates can't get any lower. They can't. The money cannot get cheaper, right? So let's think about that this way. So if you're looking at a home, let's call it 300,000 price range, that home is going to be 325 to 350 12 months from now. Right? And that just means a bigger payment because with interest rates going down, we saw a little bit of a pullback on payments, right? So we saw homes go up in value by 50,000, but home but the actual payments went down. Yeah. But we're we're done with that. That's over. Yeah. So from here on out, as home values keep going up, the payments keep going up because the the interest going down. Yeah, right. so it's kind of caught up. Like at first, yeah, you could buy fifty thousand yeah. more for less because of rates. But now mm -hmm. we're in a spot where, now we're in a spot where home prices have, have increased enough that it's like, okay, you're you're staring down a higher payment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Katie, this is this question. Yes. By the way, shout out to Katie Rogers. Katie is an. an uh, we kind of gave her a hard time about the SPF thing earlier, but Katie's an incredibly talented agent. I one of the things that we talk about all the time uh, on the team, you guys, is that uh, how how grateful we are for our clients and how grateful we are for uh, the team members that work for us. And Katie's just an unbelievable person, the kind of person that would give you the shirt off her back, and and it shows with the way she works with clients. And I, Katie, I can't thank you enough, and I can't tell you how proud I am and how proud of yourself you should be. On how on how good of an agent you are, but anyway, how would you advise a client who is upsizing but has has to sell to buy? They're hesitant, understandably, to put themselves on a timeline in this. Yeah, process. yeah. Well, and and then that there goes the other part of it, right? Yeah. So, so now this is this is very interesting. I'm seeing a lot of clients right now look at it and say, okay, okay, I'm going to go make that purchase, right? I do need to sell my home. So a lot of sellers are not taking contingent offers, and and I'm not saying this is right for everybody. But I'm seeing a significant number of sellers say, great, 
we're going to go make a non-contingent offer on a property, even though we do have to sell this home to make it happen. Yep. Right. But we're going to put the closing out to a 45 day or a 55 day closing. And then we're going to put our home on the market five or 10,000 below value, get six, seven offers and let get beaten up to frankly a higher price because that, that's a great strategy in this market when, when the buyers are when there are so many buyers in the market underpricing slightly actually gets you more money in better terms yep and and you know you're talking about Livonia you know and again I'm watching the market on a monthly basis I saw this happen with a couple of ranches um, down off of Plymouth Road where some in the state streets where some of them had started up here and they kind of hung on the market 10 or 15 days and then they got knocked down some of them started down here where I was on the market for 72 hours and got pushed up. The ones that got pushed up, each one of those three did better than the five or six that got knocked down. Yeah. Each one of those sellers actually netted more money. I'm doing a case study on this right now in a couple of different cities yeah. that have very similar properties and a lot of sales because I want to see what the actual effect of this is. But the preliminary data is you actually get more money when you underprice slightly. And there's a reason for this. And the reason being is you're causing the buyers to move from acting with logic to emotion. Yep. You know, it's a basic human human instinct that we want to win. Yep. And once we're competing for something and we want to win, it becomes more about the winning than the price. Yeah. Uh, so by the way, I'll give you a real life example on this, Mike. Ready? Mm -hmm. uh, I had a property in in I had a property that I sold in um, the hey, Tom Ball. Hey Tom. The comps suggested the comparable home sales suggested that I should price it at three and a quarter. Okay. Yeah. I thought in my head, based on the market, that I probably could get this client 340. Right. I thought 340 was the number. Okay. And so and so we were going back and forth and we were talking, and and he said, and, and the client said, Hey, look, let's, you know, he was pushing me to put it up at 340. And I said, Hey, put it up at three and a quarter. That's what that's what these comparables show. Mm -hmm. You just trust me on this one. We had so much activity first weekend. We had so many offers first weekend that we're under contract for significantly above 340. Right. And it's because, and it's not just, and it's not just the price. There's other terms that are associated with selling a home, Mike. And, uh, and so we got great terms on everything else. Yeah. We got great timelines and everything else. We were able to really line the thing up. And so Katie, he, here's the question. Here's the question to ask your client in this scenario. Uh, and, and this is the question I would ask any client in this scenario. Is it more important to squeeze, squeeze every ounce of juice out of the price of this home? Or is it more important to nail this move and, and get the get the all the other terms that line up and get pretty close on that price? Right? And and if you're moving a family. Or if you're if you're upsizing, downsizing, moving kids, whatever, the answer is no, no, no. Make this easy for me. It's not. I'm less worried. I'm less worried about getting an extra five thousand dollars on the sale of my home than I am making sure that this move lines up correctly. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> because if you're already getting more than what you thought you would get on your home anyway, what's what's an extra five thousand dollars if it's going to make your life miserable, or if you got to move twice? Or you got to live in a hotel for a couple of months, right? So is yeah. it more important for you for me to squeeze every every ounce out of this thing, or is it more important for me to really nail this move for you, right? And, yeah. and I would say nine nine and a half times out of ten, it's it's no 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 no. Let's let's get this thing lined up. I'm far more concerned with that than getting every penny. Yeah. Right. Read my, and, and, you know, bring this, bring this into, into an, an actual, okay. So, and this happens every day of the week and twice on Tuesday where we're getting offers on properties. They're saying, Hey, here's a price that's three, 4,000 bucks higher, 5,000 bucks higher than the next, next guy, but you got to be out of closing. Yeah. Right. So think about that. If you've got a couple of kids, uh, you're now doing a double move. So there's a three to $5,000 extra cost. There's storage because you got to put yourself somewhere because you don't have access to that next property for, for a month usually. So there's storage, right? So there's another thousand or 1500 or 2000 in fees. Then you got to go to an extended stay. There's another 1500 bucks. And then if you're working from home, you're all in the same spot. I mean, and now the schools are out, right? It doesn't matter if people went back to schools, they're out now. You've got four people habitating one room for 30 days. I mean, just, just, just the pain factor. Yep. Or you can take an offer that's three thousand less, which is actually netting you more because of the cost of doing the double move. 
So, so putting it down in, into, into actual bite-sized chunks, look at this thing, right? Yep. Now, when it comes to the sellers, here's, here's what I, I advise people to do. Let's get ready for market, right? Because same thing, when that right home comes up, it's not going to be the right home for you. It's going to be the right home for you and 20 other families out there, right? So, Katie, to answer your question, I would advise a client to say, uh, you know, hey, Austin, you know, when that right home comes up, we want to be able to strike like lightning. Right. But yep. to do that, we've got to be ready to get your home on the market to do that. I think the actual items we should do is this week, clean out the closets next week, repaint that room. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have our photographer out. We're going to get the photos done. We're going to get the videos done. We're going to get all of those prep items ready because if that home comes on the market third or fourth week of June, we can immediately get your home on the market. If we have an accepted offer, press go on the button. Yep. It's, I, that's the strategy. Yep. Let's get everything ready so that when you get under contract with the home that you want to buy, we press go. Yep. And we immediately get that home sold. And that's it. And that's exactly right. Right. Yep. And, and, and especially like, like for me, I'm, I'm a plan guy. I like having a plan. So it makes me feel really comfortable. Like I, I like having a plan of, okay, I can take steps today and not have a lot of pressure so much, but just take steps. Right. I mean, I'm doing that with my own house right now. Like, like I'm, I'm actually pushing myself to go a little faster. So, you know, I got back from, from seeing my sister these past four or five days, I've taken 60% of the stuff, my clothing on the main level of the house and I'm donating it. Right. This weekend I'm going through the basement. I'm taking 60, 60% of everything in there. It's going right. And then by the time, so, so it's a bite-sized chunk. So by the time I actually move, cause I am going to go see houses, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not it's this big monster of a thing. It's this yeah. bite-sized chunk. And we've got some good questions in here too. Yeah. Tom. Luxury homes in this market. I've got an opinion on this. Yeah, do it. Uh, uh, Tom, I'll tell you an example. On my lake, I'm on Commerce Lake, and a home went on the market last week for $1.3 million. Beautiful home. Matter of fact, it might be, it might arguably be the best lot on the lake. Right. Because it, it you're not on a hill and having to walk down. It's sunset side. It's tucked away in a cove. It's a beautiful home, completely updated. It's it's it's, you know, it's worth every bit of one point three million. And so there was uh, there's the rest of it. I, I clicked the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, one hundred thousand over any comparable. But but no, it will go. New build comp support it. The the the. Uh, and so what I what I find sometimes with. Uh, on on the luxury side of things mm -hmm. is that, uh, and so I was talking to another agent that I that I network with, and she had a client that came in and offered 1.3 cash, and lost on the home, and and because they they wouldn't go above 1.3, and somebody else came in and just paid more for the home, right? And um, and so a couple of things on that. One is, uh, one is real estate really is a game of percentages. Yeah. And so, and what I mean by that, Tom, is like, you know, look, if, if I'm negotiating a, a $200,000 home and, and we're talking about 5%, that's $10,000. That $10,000 is $10,000, but $10,000 isn't, isn't a, it, it, it doesn't feel like this big looming number, right? Yeah. If I'm negotiating a, a million dollar home and we're talking about 5%, we're talking about $50,000. Now, by the way, 50 is more than 10, except for in this case, it's not. It's the same percentage. Yeah. So if I've got a client, if I've got a client that's thinking about, okay, I've got a $500,000 home and I want to, and I want to overprice my home by a hundred thousand dollars. The conversation that I'm having with my client in that instance is, well, I'm having a 20% over conversation, not a $100,000 conversation. Right. Yeah. And what we know, and what we know is, in, in this market, 5% might be reasonable, 10% might be, 20% is like, that's a different animal, right? Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. Like when, when uh, sometimes we'll be negotiating back and forth on a, on a million dollar property and somebody wants to counter back with a, a $10,000, but $10,000 is a thousand dollars on, on a hundred thousand dollar property. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'm not disparaging $10,000 by, by no means. But what I am saying is when you look at things actual. It, it, not emotionally, and you look at it as a percentage of the sale, It's it reframes the conversation. Does that make sense? 
And what Definitely. I find, especially with my luxury clients, is that, and this isn't always true, Mike, but like my experience with people that make money is, is that oftentimes they're a little older, they're a little more established, they're they're oftentimes they're uh they're a little more sometimes particular or, or used to getting things their way, right? And so mm-hmm. sometimes I'll find people people at a higher price point will dig in over the equivalent of $1,000 on a $100,000 home. And the reason why is because they're used to getting their way. They're just used to getting their way. And it becomes a matter of, of principle, Yep. not a matter of, of, of reality or fact. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that myself. Really? Like I, I literally, there's a house that, that, that I lost out on about a year ago. It, and that was exactly it. I just, I dug in on principle because I'm like, come on, dude, there's no way I'm not paying 10,000 more for this thing. Nope. That house is now worth 70,000 more than I was going to pay for it. Which Jay Z has a line about this. I'm a big Jay Z fan guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay-Z has a, has a, fa- a line about this. There's a, there's a, when you go, when you go from Manhattan into Brooklyn, you cross the Brooklyn bridge and you, and you end up in this neighborhood called Dumbo, right? I think it's over the Brooklyn bridge, right? It's one of the bridges. Yeah, yeah. You end up in Dumbo. I, I want to know where you're going it's with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the down under the bridge. It's, it's Dumbo. That's what it is. Anyway. So he, he has a, he has a line in one of his songs where he says, I, I had a, I had a property that I could have bought in Dumbo for a million dollars and I turn around and now it's worth five. Now who's a Dumbo, right? Oh and yeah. He, yeah. He, and he that. talks about like, instead I got, I got bent out of shape over nothing, but like, you know what I mean? But now who's the Dumbo? Yeah. So my point is, is like, it's, it's, we, we're dealing in, in, uh, we're dealing in percentages and you guys can convenience means something. Yeah. I, look, if, if if I'm if I'm presented with two options on, like if I'm buying a car, in in one option is for twenty five thousand dollars, and the other option is for twenty seven, but it has all the things that I want. Like, uh, the, the only time you regret it is not by just paying the extra two thousand dollars. As a matter of fact, my car, I did that. I I went a little cheap and didn't get a model with Apple CarPlay, and I kick myself every day because it's the coolest thing ever. Right, I like that car play. I do for an extra, uh, Mike, for an extra five hundred dollars, like thousand dollars on the price of the home. I could have or the car. I could have had Apple CarPlay, right? Nice. Same kind of thing with this cash buyer on our lake. That lot is never coming up again. Well, and how and how, how, how long have you owned that? Dollars. What's that? How long have you owned that home or own that car? Own that car? Two and a half years. Let's see, two and a half years. So that's. And you were saying it's another five hundred bucks or a thousand? Yeah, call it, let's just round up and call it a thousand. I don't even think it's that, but call it a thousand bucks. Let's this. call it a thousand. So, so at this point in time, that is one dollar, one dollar and four cents a day. <laughs> now, who's the Dumbo? Thank you, Jason. And that's if you if you sell the car today. <laughs> but if you keep the car another year and a half, now it's going to be fifty cents a day for for the low low price of fifty cents a day. You too can have Apple CarPlay. You could have had Apple CarPlay. That's for right. the low low price of of 50 cents a day, you could have had the best lot on the lake. Yeah. Right. And that's it. Right now. Yeah. And, and Tom, I'll say this, you know, it, it's all, you know, there, there's two different things I think they're playing out here as well. Right. So part of it is, is that hundred thousand dollars, how far above 500 is it to, to Austin's point? I mean, if we're talking like an eight, nine hundred thousand dollar seller, a hundred grand is closer to 10 to 12%. I'm yeah. not sure that that's unreasonable to try. Yeah. In this market, now if we're at five hundred thousand, you're right. I mean, it's it's a twenty percent push, and that that is difficult, right? Now, you also and 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 I know you know this. I mean, Tom, we've worked together in the past. Um, a lot of respect for it for you. Um, it, you know that. Um, you know, Austin ran into one about about a year ago in commerce that we looked at those comps, and the comps were one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand below where our gut was telling us this thing could go right yeah and we you know it was a shot in the dark and we were like all right let's give it a shot and we got three four offers on it yep right and here's what happened the comps were two things one almost a year old so the market had moved 15 percent. yep we couldn't prove it yep and two both both the most recent comps were foreclosures, which somehow this neighborhood had two foreclosures, which was nuts. It was bananas, but it did. 
So they were artificially low comps as well. And so we're looking at this and we're thinking, okay, our gut says 30 or 40% more, but we have zero evidence or proof. Yep. Zero. And we tried it. Well, well, Austin tried it. Austin, Austin, we looked at that and did it and put it on the market and got it. Now we had a massive appraisal issue that we had to get through and we yep. did. And it was rough and it took two weeks to negotiate that thing out. Yep. But at the end of the day, that client got 75,000 more than what other agents were saying. Yeah. And who, I mean, who, who was I to say otherwise, you know, because the evidence didn't stack up, but the market did. So like Tom, if you're up in that seven, seven, seven to seven fifty range and you're talking a hundred K, I'm not sure I wouldn't try it. I probably would. I'd probably throw it on that market at eight hundred instead of seven hundred or eight twenty five instead of seven twenty five or whatever that is, or or nine hundred instead of eight hundred yeah. and give it a go. Because it's yeah, consulting with the client, Mike. Yeah. Here's here's the conversation I would have with the client. So any of you guys that are thinking about selling your home and you're thinking about, hey, look, I want to try to go up a little bit above. Yeah. Here's the question I would ask you. And by the way, there's no wrong answer with it. How long yep. would you be willing to sit at the market for that price and not sell your home? Good point. Right? What how long would you how long would you be willing to go on the market at this price and not sell your home? Another question I might ask, let me ask you this. So, right, uh, you want to put your home at 725. Yeah. Let's pretend someone came in after you'd been on the home market for you know, 30 days and offered you 600 cash. Would you take it? You I'd look at it. Yeah, I'd look at it. Yes. Yeah. I might negotiate a little bit, but I'd look at it. Yeah. And, and then that conversation becomes, well, can I offer a suggestion? Why don't we, why don't we try it seven and a quarter? And we know after 30 days that, that we need to bump back to 650. Yeah. Deal. Right. Yeah. I, you know, that's, that's the cover. I, I don't mind yeah, someone yeah. trying it, but, but, yeah. but you're at the end of the day, you're, you're hiring us to negotiate market and, and sell your home. And so like, you know, look, I can't look, I can't sell my Jeep Grand Cherokee that I bought for that's worth $26,000 because it's 2015, no matter what the market is, I can't sell it for 35, mm -hmm. right? It's not my fault. It's not your fault. It's just at some point the market talks to us. So I don't mind us trying to push the top of the market, but you know, but it's oh, something and, we got to read the market, don't we? Now you got to read the market, and if you're looking at, I mean, and you got to read the market, and you got to read all the way down to the neighborhood level, depending on the cities, yeah. right? Which is basically your Woodward corridor, your Up Rochester Road in Oakland Township, your 275 corridor, all the way from South Canton, all the way up into Commerce. You know, a lot of Ann Arbor is neighborhood based, not square footage based. You know, so so like like, and and you're you're talking about a Troy right now. You know, I mean, if you're looking at if the home, if you're looking at comps that are like, let's say four to 500, like, like Somerset, right. Yeah. But you're looking at, um, you know, what is it uh, a house that's in beach forest, but there just hasn't been a sale in beach forest in a long time. Yeah. Give it the shot. Yep. Right. Because those are two different neighborhoods. And even though they're very, very close together, it might want to give it a shot. If we're talking a little further West and you're talking about something with a, with a Bloomfield school, but all you've got are Avondale school comps or Troy school comps. Again, give it a shot. Yeah. You know, because it, sometimes somebody will be looking for a very specific school district and they will be willing to pay a little bit differently or a little bit more. And that's not saying that that one district is better than than another. I'm saying that it's different than another. Yeah. Right. And that and that's different. Right. Because like like actually, here's a good example. And I, I always kind of go back to Clarenceville schools, right? There are people that want to be in Clarenceville because Clarenceville has a rock star hearing impaired program. Yep. Best in class, right? There are a lot of people that want to be in Farmington Hills schools because of their STEAM program and because you can also go to the Air National Academy and it'll reroute the tax dollars over there, right? I mean, there are different reasons for different districts that are unbeknownst to us. Maybe worth a shot. Uh, but to Austin's point, we also got to look at where's this guy going, yep. right? Like, can he wait 30 days? Does it really matter? Does he need to move? Is he under any sort of pressure? Does he have a job in Denver that he's got to be at right now? And so now he's making a double payment sure. and, you know, he's paying three grand a month on house A and three grand a month on house B. And this thing's going to start hurting pretty quick. Or is it a like to move situation? Like, hey, it'd be cool if I move, but this house is, is good enough. Yeah, you because know, if the house is paid off and he's paying taxes, insurance, and utilities, that's not right. bad. 
That, that's a that's a nice to move situation, not a need to move. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Just I think I'd future pace it and say, hey, you know yeah. what? Let's say let's say that we that I, let's say that I walk over here tomorrow and put a soul sign in your yard. Where are we going? Yeah. What's that look like? When do we need to be there? What's important to you about being there at this time? Yeah. You know, and and start doing some some really good future pacing. Um, yeah, Mark. Thanks. I appreciate that. I think that's uh, Wendy's listing on the team. Yeah, yeah we got you know the listing yeah. of fun. Yeah. Um, Jerry Jones tells a story. You know, Jerry Jones has t Texas Stadium, right? Yeah. Jerry's World, right? The big stadium. Uh, do you know what the Do you know what that costs to build? No, it's no it's, idea. I. It's like either it's like one point three billion, one point two billion, somewhere in there. Jesus. Like a big. Do you know what the original budget on that by chance was? Like when they originally planned things out. Seven hundred million. Yeah, it was like seven hundred million. Was yeah, it really? You okay. not quite doubled it, right? You not quite doubled it. And so someone had asked him, like, why, why did you do that? And he said, Hey, man, there's only, there's only been one time in my, there's the only times that I regret the decisions that I make in my life are when I make them based on dollars. Being cheap. Yeah. Yeah, being cheap. And by the way, it goes both ways. Yeah. It, it does. The, the reason I, and the reason I tell this story is that. Uh, Look, at the end of the day, you, you, we have to live in the homes that we buy. You you better the, – and most people, when I sit down and talk to them about why they're moving or why they're buying into a home or whatever it is, the pr pr price is pretty far down the list. Like yeah. There's, there's other things that are going on in their lives. And so I would, mm -hmm. I would, I would encourage people, and it's easier said than done because, right, money, of course, matters, and we work hard for our money. But, like, look, you got to live in your this house for the next – 10 years you you got to go to this for the next 3600 days in a row you got to go and be did i do the math right yeah. 365 times 10 yeah like you got to live in this home you know what i mean so anyway anyhow no and that and that's the truth and and thanks tom no, thank you as well tom i appreciate it i appreciate you um and that's it. And, and I've made that mistake on the, on the money thing, you know, more than once, right? I mean, selling selling investment properties like a flip or a rental, I've tried to try to penny pinch out that last thousand or two thousand, end up losing the buyer, and almost invariably, I've gotten one to three percent less than that original buyer was offering. Yep. Almost invariably, and it was just me trying to pinch out another five hundred thousand, two thousand, whatever that looked like. And I should have just gone with it because the reality is after the buyer left, my listing became stale Yep. Spent half the money just on upkeep, taxes, utilities, insurance, spent the other half of the money on the buyer themselves, the next buyer. Yep. This is what it is, right? Is what it is. To your point, you know, I mean, is it nice to have an extra thousand? Sure. Yep. But was it worth taking the gamble and ending up losing three or 4,000? On these investment properties that was that I had sold, no, yep, no, no. Actually, one was in Troy. One was in Troy. Where what did we put it on for uh, three twenty five? I had a three three twenty offer right away, and I thought for sure I was going to get a full price offer, so I countered it back to full price. The guy just walked on me. He was like, "Nope, that was my offer. Sorry, I'm done. I'm out." I ended up selling it at three fifteen. Yep. Thirty days later, so I lost five thousand plus a month of uh, you know utilities and taxes and everything. Yep. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, all right, well, else we got guys. Any uh, any last uh, last questions? Anything sitting out there? This is a good one. This is a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. All right, well, let's do it to it. Yeah, let's get on out. Let's get on out. Well, can I end like this, Mike? Can yeah. I end it? Do it. Hey, I kind of, I kind of said this earlier, but, uh, and I mean this genuinely. I, we, so we do this every. So this is the real estate Q and A. We do it every Saturday, ten a.m. Uh, I, I hope you found this valuable. And, and any questions that you have, we'll always answer that. You know, we try to be as candid and as real as possible with that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, so we appreciate you. And, and more than anything, I. You know, we're talking about homes and we're talking about dollars and we're talking about all these things. But at the heart of this entire thing, Mike, is families and it's it's yes. families with it's families within the communities that we serve. It's families that 
it's families within the uh, the team members that we serve every single day. And uh, I'm just, man, I'm so incredibly, I'm just humbled every single day, uh, the people that put their trust in us. And I'm so grateful for it. And I take it so seriously. And I know you do too. We talk about it all the time. And um, uh, one of the things that we do on the team every single day is we we talk about three Gs. We talk about gratitude, goals, and grit. And, and I just... I, just starting with a grateful heart, I just am so grateful for all the families that give us the opportunity to serve them and, and through that build a really great life for ourselves. But it comes with that service first. And anyhow, so I, Mike, I appreciate your leadership every day. I appreciate uh, our team members and I appreciate our clients and I appreciate you all spending time with you this morning. You could have been anywhere at Saturday at 10 a.m. and you're here with us. So thank you. I'm really grateful and humbled by that. Absolutely. And, and ditto. I echo the same sentiments. Thank you. There it is. All right. Good job by you. Likewise. Peace. Good job by you. See you.